Doesn't that sound nice having my name in it? I, I just have to say it's it's kind of cool. It says Danielle in there. I love having your name in there. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a while second, to get it. <laughs> second week there. having it there, but it's kind of fun. I, mean, I, I know it's a lot to edit that thing. We should have been able to remove Ray's name for just a show. Just for just oh, one just show. Just for the one day. Yeah. <laughs> just for the one day. Yes. We could have called it Johnson and Johnson instead of. You know, I do the, think that name might be taken though. Yeah, it I'm might pretty be. sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that one's trademarked. <laughs> I think you're right. (laughs) So before the break, we were talking about credit card debt and some of the difficulties that come in when the rates go up and your credit card debt all of a sudden starts becoming unmanageable. And we want to make sure that we're managing it before we start missing payments so that we have options. So talking about those options, John, you mentioned a closed end second. What would that be? Yeah, so a a closed end second is... It's really like the first mortgage that you already have. It's a fixed time frame. Most first mortgages are 30 years. Um, it's a fixed interest rate. The rate doesn't move. And then your principal and interest payment is fixed. So a closed end second is the same concept, only it's in second lien position. So it, it, the whole lien position in itself is a little confusing, but the easiest way to explain is if, if for some reason you were to lose your house and the banks sell the house, the bank in first lien position gets to claim whatever money they got off of the house and anything that's left goes to anybody in the second position. Um, For you as a borrower, it doesn't really matter first lien, second lien. It really depends on really what matters is can we get the money that you need to pay off the debt? Can we lower your monthly payment? But a closed end second is just like a first mortgage, but it's in second lien position. So it's fixed rate, fixed term, fixed dollar amount. So I assume being in second position, we're also talking a little higher risk. And so your interest rate probably is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, Absolutely. So second lien position, there's additional risk to the lender. And so they do look for a slightly higher interest rate, but it's not, it's not horrible. It's going to be somewhere from one and a half to 3% more than a first mortgage. And that's going to depend on your loan to value. How much money are you borrowing against the value of the house, uh, your credit score. There's all sorts of factors that go into that. And those are all basically risks as well that they're assessing. But the, and, it, and you've heard me say before, we don't lend money, we assess risk. That's all, okay. uh, for, in the mortgage world, that's all we're doing is assessing the risk. What is the likelihood of you repaying? And then those risk factors determine how much money you can borrow and what your interest rate is going to be and what terms you can have. And even with that slightly higher interest rate, it's a lot better than credit card interest rates. You're, you're still way ahead of the game. Yeah, I've been seeing credit card rates anywhere from, I mean, I've seen some people that have 10% rates. I don't know how they've done it. Good for them. Um, but I've been seeing 19 to as high as uh, 24, 25%. You're talking rates of eight and a quarter to nine and three quarters on a fixed second. Um, it, it's significantly better. I would never think that um, borrowing money against your house is a great way to live your life. But it is, or using your house as a bank account, but it is a solution to a very big problem that could spiral your life out of control where you lose everything. Absolutely. Anytime I talk to somebody that wants to take cash out of their house to pay off debt, we we look at the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Is there, if you stop going to Starbucks twice a day for the next year and a half, can you pay your credit card off? Are there things that we can do in changing your lifestyle to where you don't have to do this? Or has that credit card payment gotten so large and so out of control that what makes the most sense and is going to get you back on track is to use that equity that's in your house? Um, I never want to take somebody out of a 3 or 4% first mortgage mm-hmm. unless that is the only option. And so we do look at all the options that are out there. But I am seeing a lot of people that are electing to give up their low rate on their first because again of, of what we've been through the last couple of years with you know people being out of work living mm-hmm. off of credit cards rates going up all of this has created a unique situation where maybe taking that thirty forty thousand dollars out of your house and going to a higher rate than you currently have is the best option yeah when we talked before about HELOCs um, the interest rate on a HELOC is going to move as, with the market as well so you might lock into a rate that you like or that you can live with, but then what happens when that HELOC goes up? And that's what's happened to a lot of people as well as those HELOCs are getting higher. So I like the closed end 
option so that you can I hate to say the word budget but so that you're able to know that you can manage that payment and you don't have to worry about it going up like the credit card rate went up yeah and is is the as the fed increases rates our lending practices change to meet whatever the current environment is and you know a year ago year and a half ago home equity line of, home equity line of credits made sense Mm-hmm. Now that rates have gone up, there may not be the best tool in the toolbox for the particular situation. A fixed rate is a uh, fixed rate second is probably the best option. Are there minimums to getting that that second? Um, most places are going to be forty to fifty thousand. I have a couple banks I work with that it would be a twenty five thousand dollar minimum. Uh, I have some banks I work with that'll do credit scores as low as six sixty. Uh, Seven hundred is kind of the sweet spot. Um, you most cases can't borrow more than 90 percent of the value of your home um, some of the better priced or better rate product out there is going to be you know 80 percent of the value okay. of the home uh, but there are some restrictions but i can figure those out for you relatively quick in a quick ho- uh, a phone call and you actually do go all over all the options you're not looking at one product that you want to sell and therefore you're going to steer everybody to, to that one product you're looking at the overall big picture what their financial goals are, and you match that to the products that you have available. Yeah, I mean, ultimately for me, I'm not looking to get one transaction done. I'm looking to be your lender for life. It, you know, you're, if you do a refinance today on a, on a closed end second with me, four or five years down the road, you're going to want to refinance together. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to sell that by another house. I want to be the person that you turn to. And so I'm always looking at what's in their best interest as opposed to just getting a transaction done. And what kind of, um, are they are buyers or peop- homeowners looking at having to have an appraisal done, the same kinds of fees that, that apply during the, um, the initial mortgage process, or are things a little bit different? With this? The, the fees aren't as much. Um, a lot of times we're using an automated appraisal system. It's almost only a couple hundred dollars for the appraisal. Okay. Uh, if you've had title work done in the last couple of years, the title fees are reduced. Um, as far as junk fees like underwriting, closing, doc prep, those type of things, those don't exist. There's, there's going to be a credit report fee, but in the most part, maybe four or five hundred dollars. If we have to get a full appraisal, maybe a thousand dollars, but it's significantly less than if you were doing a refinance or a purchase where you're looking at four or five, six thousand dollars worth of closing costs. Yeah, on that initial purchase, you've got taxes, insurance, all kinds of things are already covered with your mortgage. So I can see where the fees should be a little bit better on the closed end. And this is something that if you own your home, you have this as an option. Right. If you're renting today and you get in this credit card debt where you can't pay your bills, you don't have that same option because you haven't invested in something that is holding equity for you. So again, if you're renting right now, this is something that you're doing to buy into your future so that when something does happen down the road, you have options and you're not up against the wall. And you've heard me say it before, you know, the equity in your home is kind of a savings account that you can't get to unless you you refinance or you have a home equity lender credit or you do a closed end second. But when you get into a situation like this with, you know, high rate credit card debt, um, it's great to have that piggy bank there that you absolutely would not have if you were renting because you're not building equity in a property that's yours. Yeah, and if people have been in their property probably two years or more, they're probably going to have a certain amount of equity, and it will depend on how much down payment they had when they bought. But I definitely think this is something worth giving you a call. What number can they reach at? Uh, call me on my cell phone at 520-247-3610. All right, we'll be back. Mm-hmm. 